Watch. Okay, so when you think about exponential functions versus log functions, you have this written down somewhere already, okay? You have to understand the basics of their graphs. There's going to be one page of your test that you're not allowed to have your calculator. Bless you. I'm sorry. Okay, so basic characteristics of these functions you have to know because you will not have your calculator with you for one page of your test, okay? So again, exponential functions could either look like that or like that, okay? So what's important about them is they have a y-intercept, no x-intercepts. So whatever you see a graph and you say, does it have a y-intercept or x-intercept, that will help you determine. Because a log will have an x-intercept and no y-intercepts. Okay, does that make sense when you are looking at these? So that's kind of a big thing about how you can tell the difference of what function would this be. Okay, and we talked about why are there two exponential ones? Because one can grow and one can decrease. So what do we look for? So for example, this equation This is an exponential equation. Is it growing or decreasing? It's decreasing and why? Decreasing because this base is less than one. Okay, the rate is 0.8, so it's less than one. Okay, what does this represent again? It's your y-intercept, so if it's to a connected word problem, what would it represent usually? The starting, whatever, starting population, starting price, whatever you have, it's the starting of it. The y-intercept, it's where you start from, okay? Um, if I had a car and I depreciate by 5%, if I had a car and I depreciate by 5%, what's the starting price of your car? What do you want to do? What's the price of a car you're going to buy? $3,000 car. What do I put in the brackets if a car price depreciates by 5%? So it's decreasing by 5%. So 95.95. So everybody see how I get that again? Remember, 100% is where we always are baseline. So if we go down 5%, we're now at 95%. Okay? What about a house? would appreciate by 5%. So let's go a $300,000 house. What would you put in there if you appreciate by 5%? 1.05. Remember, you always start at 100% as a baseline, and you can either go up from 100 or down from 100. Okay, so that's important to know. Um, domain and range, do you got that down pat? What's the domain? What's the range? You have to know those characteristics. The domain is forever. What's the range on this one? Zero to up. And do you remember that there's a soft because you don't you don't ever touch that line, right? What would the range be? What would the domain be on this one? 
Whoops, I should have. So, what's the domain? What's the range on this one? Did you remember that they just switch, right? Everything's switching because this one had a Y intercept, now this one has an X intercept. They switched. The domain is the range of that, the range is the domain of that. Okay, so general characteristics. On a chart, how would I know if it is exponential or not? Is this changing exponentially, yes or no, and why? It's doubling. So is that exponential? Yes. I times by 2. I times by 2. I times by 2. The next one would be 48 then, right? Okay. That's exponential because it's consistently being multiplied, 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 multiplied. That's what exponential is doing. Okay? So that's on your test, understanding a chart. Exponential means you're always multiplying consistently by that number, by that number, by that number, by that number. Okay? Does that make sense? It's on your test. You got it? Okay, so general properties without a calculator. We can do all that stuff. Okay. Ready. Um, we can kind of do this without our calculator. It's exponential, so it would have a y-intercept. What is that y-intercept going to be? It's going to be, did you pick 4? And should we grow or should we decay? decrease because a half means you're reducing and then you know that you don't ever touch that line, right? So x-intercepts, there are no x-intercepts, right? The y-intercept was at 4. The range, so the range is the height, so that's zero to infinite. And domain is left and right. Number two, it's a log graph. So what kind of shape should a log graph look like? It should have a x-intercept. So it should look like that. So what did the five do, the five would change like, these points. It can never ever change that point. It could change the height of this one. Okay, so what are the x-intercepts? It's at one. That never will, would change. The multiplier doesn't change it because multipliers change heights. Y-intercept, there's none. Range, 
down to up, domain. Okay, so you can see how everything was flip-flopping. There was nothing and a number. So on this one, there was a number and nothing. This flip-flopped because it was exponential to log, so they're interchanging. Okay, the next one is exponential. So you should have a y-intercept. And what is that y-intercept? 3 and should I grow or decrease we should grow because the 1.2 means I'm increasing by 20% that's what it would be so your answer should be very similar to your answers on the last exponential there's no x-intercepts. 3 is the y-intercept because that changed. Range and domain are the same as example 1. Okay, it didn't matter if I was growing or decreasing. The domain and range are the same. Okay, and then the last one. So this is a natural log. So logs look like this, but this is a negative. Do you remember what the negative just did to this shape? It makes this shape just flip. Can you think about what that would look like flipped? So the log shape got just flipped because of the negative. But again, you always concentrate on those intercepts. Does it have an x-intercept or a y-intercept? Those are very special. So this is still at 1. Doesn't move. Never touches the y. And then the answers to that should be the same as number 2, right? Okay, match. So here's what I want you to do. If it has a y-intercept, it has to be exponential. Oh, never mind. I can't do that because of some of these shifts. Okay. Sorry. Because of this, the minus one stuff, it changed some things, okay? Okay, let's... No, you have a matching without your calculator, so. Okay, we could, let's start with this one. This is a pretty basic one. There was no shifting on it. We need a y-intercept of 0.2, and we need to grow. We need to double. A y-intercept of 0.2, and we need to grow. So that would match... The third one, did you pick? Yeah. Okay, um, this one, there's no shifts on it, so it would just look like that. There was no shifting on it, should, so it should just look like that and just go through one, we didn't move. So which one would that be? Right through one. The last one? Okay, now 
this is a y-intercept and it should decrease it's going to decrease does anybody want to predict what this would do to it after it'll just be moved down so for instance if 1.5 was supposed to be the y-intercept it would go down so technically it should be at 0.5 can you find a graph that would resemble that shape, all the things we know, but it, everything just got shifted down? I think I'm picking the first one. Okay, and then this last one. So five log would look like that. This intercept would have been at one, zero, right? That's the log. But then again, that coordinate would have got shifted down one. So then what shape would it match? I'm picking the second one. So there you can see, this one's a little tricky. There's my intercept there. Just got moved down one. Okay, so you would have, on your test, you would have some kind of matching. Match the graphs to the equations according to their properties. I would probably have a chart describe these kinds of characteristics to know your domain and range of each. And know y-intercepts, know if this is decreasing or increasing. Okay, here's a chart. Give me the missing number in it. It's exponential. So what does exponential mean? Exponential means you times by something to get to there. You times by something to get to there. You times to get to that. You times to get to that. So how am I going to get that timesing number? What would you do to get that times number? Anybody find it and want to tell us how they found it? So 80 times what got me to 60? 0.75. So how did you just come up with that? You did this divided by that gives me what I multiplied by. Yeah. Okay, so 80 times 0.75 is 60 times 0.75 is 45, which would be the missing. Let's check out. If I times it, if I times it, I kept getting the right spot. Print call. Okay, so always the same times are. Okay, here we go. Word problems. This, this is the main part of your test, right? The word problem stuff. B is the number of bacteria. So I'm going to do that. Bacteria. It is my Y. Bacteria is my Y. You guys are needing to get better at defining your variables. Write that out on paper. This is called my X variable, which would be time, and we're going to say days, because I might have something with days and then give you hours or something different, right? And you have to figure that out separately. So what does 50 represent in this situation? So I don't want you to write y-intercept. What in words specifically for this problem? So we talked about the y-intercept being the start. So what is it the start of? The start 
what? The, the start amount of bacteria. Because the Y, the Y is bacteria. Is the bacteria increasing or decreasing, and then how do you know? So which one is it, increase or decrease? Increasing? Why? What makes it increase? The base is 10, which is more than 1. Yep. The base of 10 is more than 1. How many days will the number of bacteria in the culture reach 800,000? So 800,000, is that an X value or is that a Y value? Is this a days or is this a bacteria? Bless you. It's a bacteria. So you're going to be doing a Y2 intersect. Okay, and you have to have all this calculator stuff memorized. You're not going to get a paper on this one. Okay, when you type this one in, you have to have brackets on that. So 50 times 10 to the brackets x divided by 2. Okay? You have to type it in like that with brackets or else it's going to go weird. Okay. Um, what do you want to do with our window before we even probably graph it here? What do you want to go to the highest thing there? Like one million? Is that probably going to be okay? One million? So if you're going to go to that height, you better make a scale that's crazy. What do you want to do as a scale? A hundred thousand? I don't know, I'm just trying it out, but if I'm trying to get to 800,000, I picked 1 million to go up to on my screen. Each tick mark is gonna be 100,000 then, something big. Not bad, yep. Okay, so do you understand that this is the concept of the graph? So we started here with 50 bacteria times 10. So on the second day, you had 500 times 10, then you had 5,000. Do you see how fast it's going to grow? So then we decided we had a Y value. So intersect, everybody's there doing that kind of stuff. Enter, enter, enter is all you have to do. I got 
0.41 and then how many days and everything is in days days and days so we don't have to worry that's just our answer so technically if you had to do a whole number it wouldn't even reach that population until the ninth day you would have to round up if you were to round does that make sense because if I round down and I tell you eight days, the population hasn't gotten to 800,000 yet. Okay, a chart. So let's go here. Years would be our X. And the number of video games sold equals the Y. So that's important for you to know. Make sure you define your variables. Okay, here's what went wrong on some people's test in the last unit. You ready? Let X represent the years starting with X equals 1 for 2000. So forget 2000, don't enter that. It says use an X value of one. So this would be two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay? So if it tells you something like that, make sure you read that before you enter it into L1, L2. Okay. And then the number of games sold, it's in thousands. So when I say 142, I don't sell 142 games. I'm selling 142,000 games, okay? So this is really bigger. Okay, go ahead to give me your um, L1, L2 stuff. Okay, so the log equation, copy and paste the log equation into your y equals. Copy and paste the log equation. And then you can also remember deactivate the plot would be a good idea. Okay, so the question says, if the games continue to sell at the rate, how many games will sell in 2015? So they gave us a year. That means they gave us an X value. So what do you do when they give you an X? You hit trace. But hold up, I'm not gonna type trace 2015. So, what number would 2015 be? So 2011 would equal 12. 2012 would equal 13, right? So do you see the trend? You should enter 16, right? So trace 16. Did you all get quit? I gotta quit. It's not letting me do it. So what's the problem? I need to go to my window. And this is the problem. It didn't let me go to 16 because my window was already ending at 12. So I'm gonna go to 20. Try that again, trace 16. So, this is what I'm getting as a Y, but let's answer it how they want us to answer it. So this is in thousands, and then it said round to the nearest thousand. So 171,000 games would how, be how they would want you to answer it then. 
okay, rounding up to the nearest thousand decimal place.